Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to build one more IBCS tiled chart in Power BI using just the built-in matrix visual. We don't need custom visuals to build this chart. Some of you probably already know why we have solid black columns, hatchet columns, outlined columns with white background, and all these uh, reddish and greenish rectangles on this chart. This is uh, recognizable already IBCS style. You will probably have seen some uh, custom visuals for Power BI that allow us to create uh, charts uh, that look uh, similar to this one. But IBCS is much more than just formatting style for your chart. I'm publishing one more video to, to tell you more about what is IBCS, why it's important, and why it's important to understand uh, the scope of IBCS, which is much uh, wider and deeper than just uh, chart formatting. I highly recommend to watch that video before starting building IBCS style chart uh, using my uh, videos. And uh, in this video, I'm going to continue uh, to talk about uh, this specific chart. First of all, let's review the chart. You can see we have three lines title here that uh, says us something about this chart. So we are talking about SVG Corporation, just a fake name I use it for the chart. And we are talking about net sales of SVG Corporation in uh, thousands of US dollars. And uh, we are talking about year 2023. And then you can see that we have previous year, PY, PL, planet data, AC, actual sales, and FC, forecasted sales. We have four different measures displayed on this chart. As I already mentioned, solid black columns are for actual sales. Hatchet columns are for forecasted sales. White outlined columns are for planet sales. So where is uh, previous year sales? And you can see these uh, gray triangles. Gray triangles are for previous year sales. We could add one more type of columns to display previous year sales, but it will be too messy to have one more kind of columns. So we use it, the triangles, let's say because for this chart, our focus is on comparison of uh, this year or actual and forecasted data for this year with the plan. We are less interested in comparison with uh, previous year. So we use just uh, small triangles. Uh, to add previous year data as some additional context, but it's not uh, our main focus. So this is how this chart works. You don't need to know anything about IBCS to quickly realize that there are some green and there are some red rectangles. Green probably means that something good for us is, kept, is happening, and red probably means that something bad for us is happening. And you'll be right. We can see that in April, our sales were below the plan. In July, we also sold less than planet. And we expecting forecasting then in September, our sales also will be below the plan. This is how IBCS style work in this chart. We start in understanding the data just at first look at the chart by noticing the color because everything else is either white or black or gray. Again, the goal of this specific video is uh, how to create a chart like this in Power BI. So subscribe to my channel and uh, there will be another series of video where I'll be talking about IBCS, what is it, and how to use it to make your reports better. First of all, let's review the chart. You can see that this chart has three lines title 
that uh, provide us useful information about the chart. We are talking about SVG Corporation, just fake name I used for this chart. We are talking about net sales in thousands of US dollars. So the chart is about net sales of SVG Corporation. And the chart is about year 2023. And on the chart we have PY, previous year sales, PL, planet sales, AC, actual sales in 2023, and FC, forecasted sales in 2023. Let's see the columns. Solid black columns are for actual sales in this year from January to July. We have no yet actual data for August, December, and therefore the columns for August, December are hatched. It's forecasted sales. So solid black is for actual data, and hatched is for forecasted data. Also, on this chart we have white uh, outlined uh, columns which are behind and a bit to the left uh, from the main uh, columns. These outlined columns are for the plan. And uh, where is the previous year? You can see these gray triangles. The triangles are for previous year sales. Why we didn't use uh, columns for previous year as well? Well, because we already have a solid uh, hatchet and white outlined columns. It will be a lot of mess if we will add one more type of column. So we used the triangles for previous year. And uh, as you can see, or we'll see later, the purpose of this specific chart is uh, a comparison between uh, 2023 actual or forecasted data with uh, the plan. So previous year here is just for additional context, so it's okay to use these uh, small triangles. And uh, what you, I'm sure, noticed uh, in the beginning of this video, on this chart we have reddish and greenish, green, green blue rectangles. What they mean? Well, they attracted our attention from the beginning. And they mean what we want to say using this chart. We want to show the difference between our sales in 2023 and uh, the plan. So you can see here for April, the rectangle is red. It means that our actual sales solid black column are below our plan white outlined column. We can see the same for July. Our actual sales are below the plan. And we can see for September that our forecasted September sales are below the plan for September. So it's really easy to notice where we have a difference between actual or forecasted data and plan. And is this difference uh, good for us or bad for us? It's bad for us when it's below the plan, so it's highlighted using red color. And it's good for us when we are above the plan, so we use this uh, green-blue color for the case when we are above the plan. This is how this uh, kind of formatting works. Now let's talk about how the chart has been created in Power BI. You can see here on Build a Visual pane that it's a matrix visual, and for the columns field, I use it month uh, column of my month dimension, which contains uh, just uh, names of 12 months. So this is why we have 12 columns in the matrix. And uh, for the values field, I use a measure, which we will talk about later. I uh, changed uh, grid lines and uh, 
column uh, header font uh, color to blue so you can see that it's definitely a matrix we have this header row with month names we have the cells of the matrix uh, with the uh, individual months inside and with all the visual elements inside uh, each uh, cell but uh, let's disable this blue grid lines i'm disabling the grid lines i'm disabling the border and uh, i'm making a font color of the column headers white again this is how i can hide all elements that i don't need to be visible on this chart and uh, now we can talk about the title which is three lines title and then we continue to talk about uh, the columns the, visual, the data visualization part uh, of this chart so what about the title in power bi as you probably know we have under the title we have two options title and subtitle to create these three lines uh, title i use it only title and uh, for the text uh, i added title for column chart uh, measure let me show you the measure this is the measure and you can see that this measure just uh, join us together three parts of the title svg corp is the first line of my title then i use unichar 10 and uh, net sales in thousand of usd is the second row and then one more unichar 10 and uh, the third line of the title to make uh, this working to split it in uh, three lines to make unichar 10 be recognizable by Power BI Visual. It's important to disable text prop for the title. We can see it's off. And uh, why subtitle is enabled if I didn't use it? Well, I use it, it as a workaround. You can see what is happening. The main part of the visual is uh, covering my third and second rows of the title. And uh, to fix this problem, I just use it. Space character here, text for the subtitle, I increase it font to 20. And uh, I think it also takes into account the spacing. So I use it 10 pixels here and five pixels here below the subtitle and uh, this is what allowed me to create enough white space for all three lines of my title now you can see that the data part of the matrix is below the three lines title now i will show you the main measure a single measure was used to create all visual elements of this chart other than title. So SVG column chart for matrix visual is a measure I use it to generate the visual element of my chart. SVG measure returns uh, one uh, image, one SVG image, uh, which is 300 pixels high and uh, 46 uh, pixels wide. It's important to update uh, image size here on format pane. And uh, then we can use uh, the measure to generate uh, image that includes, for example, for January, the measure need to generate SVG image that includes rectangles, uh, solid black rectangle, rectangle uh, white uh, outline rectangle rectangle which is uh, green blue rectangle and uh, gray triangle and uh, two text labels 
for data label and the month uh, label. One more important thing is when uh, you create a measure that generates SVG image, you need to go to measure tools and change data category for this measure to image URL. Otherwise, Power BI won't be able to recognize that image should be displayed in in the visual instead of uh, SVG code. And now we can review Measure itself. As I already mentioned, Measure creates SVG image that contains outlined column for PL, black solid column for AC, or hatchet column for FC, gray triangle for PY, and red uh, or green uh, bar for AC, PL or FC, PL comparison. Period, month, label, and data, net sales in thousand of USD label. Data label we use only for AC or FC, actual or forecasted data. We don't display any other data labels on this chart. Next part of the measure is where I define variables that contain uh, values required for the chart, such as PY sales. I'm just uh, assigning uh, a measure that contains my PY sales to a variable. The same for planet net sales. A bit more complicated for actual and forecast because we display only either actual or forecast. We don't need to display actual and forecast at the same time. And therefore here I choose uh, if uh, actual data is present and the measure for actual data doesn't return blank, then I will use actual data. And if my actual data measure is blank, then I will use forecast data for this ACFC variable. Then I have a list of all periods or months which I will need later. Then I will need selected months to know if, uh, what exactly months uh, I'm generating visual elements uh, now. Max value is more complicated uh, variable. In this variable, I'm uh, comparing uh, largest values of PY, PL, AC, NFC for all months. This is why we have all periods here, because I need to know which is the largest possible value I will need to display in the entire chart. I will need it for scaling to decide how high my columns need to be to be sure that there is enough place even for the largest column. Also, it takes into account not just columns, but the position of the triangle for previous year data. The max value is the largest value I need to display on the entire chart. Main scenario returns just uh, a text. Uh, this measure returns just a text and I save it into a variable, which is AC when I have actual data or FC when I have forecast. I will need it to decide if my column is going to be solid black or if it's going to be hatchet for the forecasted data. Next section of my measure is format configuration. I define colors here. Color black is not exactly black. It's a dark, dark uh, gray, color gray, color red, color green. Font size in uh, points. I use the same font size for title, for data labels, and for period or month labels. Also, I recalculate it into pixels. EM uh, variable is my font size uh, in pixels. 
because I will need it later to calculate label positioning and so on. SVG height is the height of the entire SVG image, which should be the same that we have here on format uh, pane in image size uh, options. So we have 300 pixel height. E SVG image width is uh, 46 pixels, same as we have here. Uh, then I have margin. It's a bit uh, problematic thing because uh, when I tried to create SVG image that take entire space of matrix cell, I noticed that Power BI add some uh, margins around my SVG image. I wasn't able to get rid of them. And this is why I add this uh, variable. It's hard coded 10 pixels because I need to take into account this white space that Power BI adds uh, because uh, IBCS recommends me to keep uh, column width to be two thirds of the category width of the entire space I have for this specific month and uh, with this additional white space Power BI adds it's important to take into account so I can make sure that my column still takes two thirds of the available space, but it's not just, but available space is a bit wider than uh, my SVG image width. This is a small problem that required a workaround. So my margin is 10 pixels and my category width is image width plus this 10 pixels. Also, I calculate height of uh, image uh, header, which is uh, for data labels. I just need enough space above my largest column for the data labels. So I define the header height as a font height in pixels or EM multiply it by one and a half. So I need space for my text for the labels. Same in the footer because I need space for month's labels. Then I calculate column width. Column width is as recommended uh, by IBCS is a category width, two thirds of category width. Then uh, I calculate column shift, which is how much uh, to the left my uh, white outlined column is shifted behind the main black solid column. So column, uh, sorry, column uh, shift, column shift is variable that defines this distance. It's uh, one ninth of the category width. And uh, SVG body is a part of my SVG image that I have to draw the columns. Uh, I think I need to clarify SVG header height is this part above the column that use it for the label. It remains the same. There is this header everywhere in every period, but uh, when it really required, it's in this largest column, because I had to keep enough space on the top for the data label. Height of uh, ACFC is the height of my solid black or hatchet column, which is calculated as actual or forecasted value divided by max value, the largest value possible on my chart, and multiply it by height of body part of my SVG image. Then I calculate, once I have height of my column, I calculate axis Y position of my column, which is SVG body minus height 
and plus header. Let me explain. Y position of my column is where I start drawing column because in SVG we have zero axis Y position here on the top. So I need to take SVG body plus header header on the top, then I have SVG body and minus column height for here I'm starting to draw my column. This is Y position on it of my rectangle I'm going to draw. Then I'm doing the same for other type of column. So I have height of PL column, I have Y position of PL column, I have height of uh, P, Y or previous year. Well, in fact, there will be no column but I need to, to know this height to calculate position of the triangle. Then I calculate the position of the triangle using the same approach that is for the columns. And uh, the final section of my measure is uh, generating of SVG image. To generate SVG image, I need uh, this uh, prefix, which is the same for all SVG images in Power BI, then I need SVG opening tag and uh, I need to close the tag later when I added all my uh, visual elements to the SVG. Also, I have this uh, style for text labels here where I define uh, font family, the go UI font will be used. Uh, font size in uh, points, which is defined earlier using font size PT variable, dominant baseline, and that's all for my font. The next uh, variable is where I generate my hatchet uh, pattern for forecast uh, columns. I can explain uh, a bit more in details. The pattern includes uh, the white rectangle for pixels white and four pixels high white uh, rectangle which is used as a white background to make sure my hatchet column is not transparent because I'm hiding uh, part of the outlined column behind and then uh, the path creates uh, three diagonal lines inside uh, of this uh, pattern. So it basically creates a small part of my pattern required to fill the column. And uh, SVGPL is where I create a rectangle object for planet data. So it will be filled with white color because it's outlined column. Then I create uh, for actual or for record data either fillet with solid black or hatchet column. You can see it's a bit more complicated because here I need to verify if my current scenario for this month is actual data. Then I use solid black color. Otherwise, for the forecast, I use a reference to my pattern defined a bit earlier as ID diagonal type pattern. The next uh, rectangle I create is even more complicated because it's for red and green variants uh, rectangles. So here I need to verify if my actual or forecasted data is uh, above then position of my rectangle will be different. The difference uh, itself between uh, actual of a record and plan defines uh, 
8 of my rectangle also color is also defined by what is greater actual for of a recast or plan you can see that position of the rectangle it's uh, to the left of the black column when uh, actual data is the above plan and it's on the top or to the right of outline it column when uh, we have sold less than planet so this is our variance uh, rectangle and the uh, next one is gray triangle first of all i define uh, a triangle itself and then I use it and define its position on axis Y. Then uh, text part of data label, text part of period label and finally I join all my uh, variables that contains uh, SVG elements, rectangle and text elements and other together and I return the complete SVG code and you can see the result. I hope this video was useful for you and you already can start building charts like this by yourself. Again, I highly recommend to watch my video about uh, what is IBCS and what is, why it's uh, much uh, wider and deeper than just uh, chart formatting style. It's probably not yet uh, published it, so subscribe to my channel and wait, it will be online soon as well. And don't forget to check uh, the description to this video, there will be a link to PBIX file with this chart, so you can play with it by yourself. And uh, I need to mention that I already have more than a thousand of subscribers, so I really hope that my videos are useful for you and uh, Feel free to ask any questions and uh, let's uh, together make data visualization in Power BI better.